Welcome back to the Sage Audio Channel. Today we'll be answering the question, what is bus compression? We'll cover the basics of bus compression and its general purpose, as well as compare and contrast it with other commonly used forms of compression to garner a better understanding of what it truly is. We'll then discuss how the settings that you choose for your bus compression will greatly impact how your mix or master is affected, as well as discuss concepts like attack and release, ADSR, and others. Lastly, we'll take a listen to bus compression being used on a mix. So be sure to stick around for the full video, but first, if you're an artist, engineer, or producer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. All you gotta do is set up the short account, upload the song, and we can do the rest. First, let's answer the question, what's the difference between bus compression and parallel compression? Bus compression and parallel compression differ in how the signal is routed and the general purpose of the compression. Whereas bus compression refers to a group of signals collectively being compressed, parallel compression can be one or more signals collectively compressed and involves both the processed and the unprocessed signal. Bus compression happens on the stereo output or a sub output, but parallel compression occurs on an auxiliary track, one that's blended in with the original or source signal. Now, although it may seem like this distinction between bus and parallel compression is an exploration in frivolous semantics, it's an important separation to make nonetheless, and one that's better to make sooner rather than later. The main reason it's important to understand the differences between the two is due to their differing purposes. Bus compression is used to create a cohesive sound and timbre, as well as control dynamics. Parallel compression is used to increase low-level signals, making these signals more easily perceived. Due to the unique intentions of each, the way the compression is applied is incredibly different. For example, if you were to use parallel compression on an entire mix, then you'd compress heavily and then subtly blend the heavily compressed signal back in with your mix. By doing so, you take the quietest aspects of the mix, make them more present by attenuating the louder parts of the signal, and then amplify this lower level information by gently introducing this heavily compressed signal into the mix. Doing so would result in a track that retains its dynamics via the original unprocessed signal and introduces low level detail via the processed and compressed signal. Conversely, if you were to use bus compression on a full mix, you'd compress gently and intentionally to create a uniform sound, one in which all instruments are being affected by identical compression settings. By performing bus compression in this example, you'd effectively shape the timbre and tone of your mix. Because bus compression affects an entire mix, or at the very least a group of instruments, using bus compression in the same way that you'd use parallel compression would result in a heavily processed and unpleasant sound. Next, let's answer the question, how does bus compression differ from regular compression? Bus compression occurs on the master output or a sub output to which multiple tracks have been routed. Although the general purpose of bus compression and regular compression is similar, the extent to which compression is introduced varies greatly, as does the impact the compression has on a mix's sound. So let's say you have a mix with 20 instruments, each playing a unique role in a recording's composition, timbre, and frequency response. If you were to compress just one of these tracks, the effect it would have on the overall mix would be relatively small. Granted, if you applied some extreme compression, it would be noticeable, but in most cases, it would be difficult to discern or recognize the changes that took place. Now, imagine that you've applied compression to the entire mix. Considering that all 20 instruments are being run through this compressor, it wouldn't take much for that compressor to affect the sound of the signal. It can be said with certainty then that attenuating 3 dB on one track out of 20 will affect the sound much differently than attenuating 3 dB on all 20 tracks simultaneously. With that said, let's answer the question, how does bus compression affect the tone and timbre of a recording? When attempting to create a specific tone with bus compression, you need to consider four things. The first is the amount of attenuation. The second is the attack and release settings of your compressor. The third is the threshold knee settings. And the fourth is if the compressor generates harmonics. Now all four of these elements will greatly impact the tonality and timbre of your mixer master. So first let's consider how the amount of attenuation 
affects a bus compressor sound. Although compression is difficult to hear, especially when used minimalistically or on just one instrument, bus compression is not. As we discussed briefly before, bus compression is the most easily perceived form of compression as it greatly impacts the sound of a mix due to the scope of the compression. Now with that in mind, how much you attenuate will greatly impact the sound of your mix or master as it will determine whether or not this compression is perceivable. Now, as a rule of thumb, try not to compress more than 3 dB when using bus compression on a full mix and 6 dB when using bus compression on a group of instruments. If you want to accomplish a more pronounced tone from your compression, consider using parallel compression instead. Next, let's talk about how the attack and release affect a bus compressor sound. The attack and release times of a compressor, especially a bus compressor, will affect the timbre of your mix or instrument group. The reason being, attack and release settings affect the attack and decay of your waveform. To better understand this concept, let's consider the ADSR of a waveform and examine this graphic. First off, ADSR is an acronym for attack, decay, sustain, and release, which represents the four primary aspects of a waveform. Although sustain and release affect the perception of a signal, attack and decay are the cause of a signal's timbre and the means by which listeners identify the sound source. For example, if you were to remove the attack and decay of a trumpet and replace it with the attack and decay of another instrument, like say a piano, a listener will most likely identify that instrument as a piano. All this to say, the attack and decay of the ADSR are incredibly important, but what does this have to do with a compressor's settings? Well, the attack setting of a compressor determines how quickly compression or attenuation will begin, and the release setting determines how long the compressor will hold on to the signal for. Now, with that in mind, if the attack time of a compressor is short and the release time is long, the attack and decay of a signal will be affected to a greater extent than if the attack was longer and the release was shorter. That said, attack and release are the easiest ways to affect your mixes or instrument groups timbre. A short attack and long release results in more compression and a notably smoother sound. A long attack and short release results in less compression and a more punchy and detailed sound. Next, let's consider how the knee setting affects a bus compressor's sound. Although knee settings aren't often discussed, they do greatly affect the timbre of a mix or instrument group and can be used to evoke a sense of a classic or modern recording. Additionally, knee settings greatly impact the amount of attenuation, which in turn affects the sound of a recording. A knee setting can range from soft knee, which refers to a gradual slope in the threshold, to a hard knee setting, which refers to a linear ratio and then significant non-linearity in the threshold. You'll notice that the soft knee setting will result in compression at lower levels, whereas the hard knee setting only allows for compression when the threshold has been clearly crossed. With that said, the compression rate or amount of attenuation of a soft knee setting is somewhat exponential in that it becomes increasingly aggressive, whereas the compression rate of a hard knee setting is linear as it is a static rate after the threshold has been crossed. Now, when using bus compression, you'll need to keep the knee setting in mind as a softer knee will result in more natural and gradual compression but may result in too much attenuation. A harder knee setting will be more precise, however, it may be more noticeable as the rate of attenuation is either in effect or it's not. Now one more thing to consider is how these settings reflect different eras in compression history. Soft knee compression is more indicative of earlier recordings in which tape, tube, and transistor saturation caused gradual compression. Conversely, Hard knee compression is more indicative of modern recordings, as true hard knee compression is a relatively new addition to compression. Lastly, let's discuss how harmonic generation affects a bus compressor's sound. Harmonics are an incredibly important aspect of audio production, as they fill in the frequency spectrum and result in a more complex and powerful sound. When using bus compression, if the compressor introduces these harmonics, then this bus compression will result in the same complex and powerful sound. Additionally, there are many forms of harmonic generation, as some formations of harmonics result in a warm tonality, and some result in a clearer or more present and forward tonality. In short, if you want to create a more complex sound with your bus compression, then consider using a plugin that models itself 
off of an analog piece of equipment. Or perhaps, use analog hardware for the most nuanced and complex harmonic generation possible. Let's listen to a mix as it's being processed with some bus compression to get a better idea of what the effect is and how it alters the sound of a mix. You see the drippy, I fit it up. I'm in my car and I get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fit it up. I'm in my car and I get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. So these are our thoughts on bus compression, but what do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. All you gotta do is set up this account, upload the song, and we'll do the rest. But thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share this video with your friends. This way we know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Also, you can subscribe to the channel. We release new videos every week, and subscribing is the best way to stay up to date. There's a comment section where you can leave your thoughts on this video, or make a suggestion for a future video. And again, if you're an artist or an engineer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.